We've been planning and saving for this trip for a few years now, and basically, me and my mate James are going to quit our jobs and go travel around the world for nine months. I think we should take the easy breezy now. <laughs> jacket. And yeah, we're going to start in Hong Kong and travel through 20 different countries across four continents and finish in New York. This is where old Jack used to work and make his whiskey. And we're going to take just one camera and film everything. Now we're driving from LA to New York. I'm so exciting! <laughs> Actually the least crowded I've ever seen it, which is quite nice. Look at the seat back. Oh, we're in Roswell. Culture of Niagara Falls, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is as fast as the car will go. Super size! <laughs> we got pulled over by the police for speeding. Nearly eight months ago, our journey began in Southeast Asia. What's your name? James. My name is 007. 007. It's scary. <laughs> we then had two and a half months in Australia and New Zealand. We need a major tour! Yeah! Did you drink too much last night? Yeah. <laughs> now we're going to do a three hour walk. <laughs> oh, that, sir? It's okay. like the end of Lord of the Rings. We're about to enter Hobbiton. We've all got our geek on. I'm about to jump 100 D for me. I am taking so much. Three, two, one. The last two months, we've worked our way through South and Central America. It's the most dangerous favela in Rio, and we got to speak on the radio. <laughs> Welcome to Machu Picchu, last spiritual refuge of the Incas. Well, this is not a bad place to spend the day. Ooh. We are crossing the border from Panama to Costa Rica, with the climax being Sunday Fun Day pool crawl. You guys enjoying Sunday Fun Day? Yeah, baby! They're from America, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Now, we're flying into LA, hiring a car, and driving all the way to New York City. The red zone is for immediate loading and unloading of passengers only. There's no stopping in the white zone. No, the white zone is for loading and unloading, and there is no stopping in the red zone. So, we've paid for a compact car, but this is what usually happens when you're in a car in America. Once you get outside, they go, yeah, pick whatever you want. So we're getting something from Standard. Go for a badass oh, Dodge. Dodge, <laughs> nice. Online, that would have cost us, what, another thousand dollars? Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> For the first couple of nights, we were staying in a hostel right smack in the middle of Hollywood. That's the famous theater. We have all the hampers. Is this your favorite? I said your favorite. <laughs> Proper nostalgia trip back at Universal Studios. So exciting! <laughs> this is my seventh time at Universal Studios, but the first time I've been in here hungover. Seems a bit tired, so what did you get to pick yourself up? Well, I wanted a, an iced coffee, yeah. but they asked me what flavor I want my coffee. And they have coffee flavored coffee. <laughs> and you can also get extra coffee when you have coffee flavored. <laughs> <laughs> Only in America. It tastes like coffee. It tastes like coffee. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> For our second two nights in LA, we stayed with my friend Kim and her two cute, friendly little dogs. By the fact that she's, she's got this pool. She's only got one swimming pool. She's got like a spare room for us, just the one spare room. You know, we're traveling, we're on a budget, just gonna make do. You're not, what happened to you, Kim? You're an alcoholic. Uh, <laughs> really not. <laughs> you made your I drink like two drinks and I'm like, ow. Are you gonna perform for us? I'm trying. 
This is going to be good. <laughs> I, need, I, need, I need an artist to perform with. I've got my headdress on. I've got my headdress on. And I'm going to perform with you. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Chicago. Most of it's just been replaced by interstate now, but what we're on right now is one of the little stretches that still exists. And then at the end of this bit loop as well is a town that actually kept intact. I say kept intact, there's lots of touristy crap there and stuff. I should I also explain the reason that we're doing the route we're doing from LA to New York is because it's James's first time to America, but it's my 13th and I didn't want to be doing the same stuff over again. So uh, instead of showing James like the most beautiful and amazing spots of America. We're going to the Deep South, which could still be beautiful and amazing, but it's just not where I'd necessarily take a first timer to America to show off the best of what the country has to offer, which I'd argue is the national parks. Having said that, however, we are about to get to Grand Canyon. Drum roll, here comes Grand Canyon. Grand? <laughs> Well, normally when I'm here we do the walk to the bottom, but we're just here for like half an hour to get some pictures of the view. Actually the least crowded I've ever seen it, which is quite nice. Still crowded though. <coughs> oh, what do you think of Grand Canyon? It's quite a Grand Canyon, if I'm honest. Yeah. <laughs> well, as we learned in Australia, Grand Canyon is actually the Grand Gorge. Canyons form by like tectonic action and the rocks breaking apart. Gorge is by water eroding away. Grand Canyon, the Grand Gorge, is formed by the Colorado River eroding it away over you know quite a few years. Grand Gorge just sounds a bit dirty though, doesn't it? <laughs> Americans just refuse to admit that they're wrong. Yeah. After spending the night in Flagstaff, we made the hour-long drive down to the picturesque town of Sedona. Considering our experience on the Inca Trail, you pretty much look like this guy with your walking <laughs> stick. I think we should take the easy breezy trail. What do you reckon? How about we take the fuck you trail? <laughs> See if your DCs hold up again. <laughs> reminds us a bit of Oz, so we might try and go on a Scotty adventure tour up there. We're in the same boat. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> Bungie. Yeah, when I just put my legs over the edge, I was thinking, <laughs> I can't look down. <laughs> In the spirit of Scotty's adventures, we're going to go back to the car park. Just up the road, we went to cool down at a natural water slide. Slide right park, Let's see how cold the water is. Wasn't too bad. Really cold, but not unbearable. So slippy. Like I didn't even know I was going to get out at the end. That was good fun. Up next. <laughs> I know how you just got in. Well, that's just because I'm a man. Live, <laughs> oh. 
enjoy? Mm. So cold. But, uh, it's freezing, it's not unbearable. It is unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> on the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. One of the great things about driving across America is the chance to watch the beautiful scenery pass by as you listen to some classic American road trip songs. As we continued heading east into New Mexico, we thought we'd test out just how fast our Dodge Avenger would go. 105, 75. <laughs> Super size, America. Come on. Just miss the police as well. <laughs> Jesus Christ is Lord, not a swear word. God damn it. Jesus titty fucking Christ. <laughs> Well, we're in Albuquerque and we're staying with our friend Marissa, who we made friends with in Fraser Island, Australia. So if you saw the Australia video, you won't recognize us in film, I think, on Fraser Island. I would prefer not to be videoed, thank you, mate. And now we're watching Marissa play for her football team. Which is, it's an all men's team, but she's still playing for them. They're called the Bushwhackers. They just subbed six players <laughs> at once. It's like watching an England friendly or something. What's going on? You just subbed half the team. Six players went on. Because we're old, we need to like, <laughs> well, get off the field. The game just got interesting. <laughs> One has got sent off. So you go off the field for two minutes, Marissa, it all falls apart. I know, see? I really do hold this team together. The Bushwhackers. We're not real Bushwhackers. <laughs> You're the ultimate Bushwhacker. <laughs> But last night she took us to his house party. We're at a, a proper American party. There's red cup over there. You asked for a red cup. Over there. You asked for a red cup. You didn't get one. I'm English, so they didn't get yeah. a red cup. There's a live band that aren't playing. There's fires and uh, yeah, it's like we're in American Pie. You guys are really getting the experience. The yeah, experience. the full American experience. But then the cops are here. You need to see your ID. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? Marissa, where have you taken it? A US party. American party. So the cops here. We have to be quiet. This is fucking awesome. Quiet down. Quiet down. Listen up, real quick. Got it. This is awesome. Listen up, guys. This is your one chance. Don't fuck with us. Don't fuck with us. Listen up, guys. This is your one chance. Okay. From now on, the music, any announcements, no more. Okay. We got to complain to the noise, right? This is fucking awesome. The bulk of it's gonna be when you start firing up the stereo type stuff, okay? Because it's a PA. It carries. So just no more. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? From Albuquerque, we stopped following the path of Route 66. It turns south towards Texas. There wasn't exactly much to see on this endless straight road through the desert, but we stopped at the town of Roswell, which is famous for an alleged UFO crash in 1947. There's a UFO museum, so we're gonna check that out because it's probably hilarious. The UFO was actually an Air Force surveillance balloon that crashed at a ranch just outside of town. And it wasn't until 30 years later did the conspiracy theory start about it being an alien spacecraft. So apparently these, these dummies used by the Air Force is what people mistook for uh, the aliens. Well, that's, that's, that's the excuse the government. That's the excuse, excuse the government. Carl. Excuse. <laughs> and over here we have some real fake aliens. You should have like one of them things where you can close and jump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, my favorite line about UFOs is by Neil deGrasse Tyson. People go, oh, I've seen a UFO, it must be an alien ship. And he's like, well, what does the U stand for a UFO? Unidentified. And now you just identify as an alien ship. I 
the next couple of days we're working our way to Austin in Texas, which means it's such a long way, but tonight I've got to stop in the middle of nowhere in Texas. Everyone we've spoken to, all the Americans we've met, think we're absolutely crazy. Like, oh my god, those people are backwards, you're gonna get shot. You know, why are you gonna stay there? You guys are you're insane. I mean it's still you know, there's still laws in these towns and stuff. Except for one thing happened last night. The US government got shut down. Breaking news, it is now midnight. The U.S. government has officially shut down. Congress worked into the wee hours of the morning, but failed to break the bitter budget standoff over President Obama's health care law. A shutdown will have a very real economic impact on real people. 800,000 federal workers will stay home today without pay. National parks like Yosemite are shuttered. We'll have to see what happens. Most likely nothing because that's all this drive is, driving through nothing in a town full of nothing, but... God bless America again. This is Fort Stockton, pretty scary. One thing to note is every single car in this car park is a pickup truck, except ours. God, I sure do wish you'd bless America again. You know, like you did, way back when it all began. But um, this is this is Texas. Um, it's so beautiful. Like to my left, we have nothing. To the right, there's nothing. There's um, a tree there. Where we just came from, actually, where we just came from, there was nothing. Um, we've learned how cruise control works. So I'm just gonna move the seat back. And, oh. Hands up. Oh, it's relaxing driving. Oh, well, <laughs> keep it straight. <laughs> Again. Fortunately, the city of Austin, where we were heading, has a reputation as one of the most fun and lively cities in the States, and it didn't disappoint. However, since we were so tired from all the driving we'd done, we pretty much spent all of our three days there in the many different bars. One thing we did achieve, though, is after eight months of trying, James finally got to DJ in a bar. Hold this out, my dear. From Austin, we headed across to Houston with Lauren, who we met at our hostel. We wanted to go to a water park since we hadn't been to one on this trip yet, but it turns out they were all closed for winter, despite it being 35 degrees outside. So instead, we went down to Galveston on the Gulf Coast. So Houston's been a success, would we say, Carl? Houston, we had a problem. <laughs> we had a problem in Houston. Failure. Galveston's going to be a winner. It's going to be close. After those last two rides. Now we're going to go on this side. All right, Carl? I'm going on. Are you, I'm going on. Are you going on? Woo! I'm going on. Carl, you can see it right over there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I totally knew I had that from the beginning. It's all right. I don't need a prize. I'm fine. <laughs> That's a consolation prize. Oh, yeah. I get a free prize. So you paid a guy $5 to get your age. Yeah. He got it wrong. I'm the winner. Shrimp, and so the wager is for 20 bucks. 
he is going to suck out that poop. That's the poop of the shrimp. And he's gonna eat it. Uh, eat it on <laughs> Show me the money. Show me the money. This is all of the poop. See? Okay, That's not poop. You can eat it. I don't want to eat it. Yes. <laughs> Are you really that big of a pussy that you're not going to eat it after you've already licked out its shit? You have to eat it. Here, I'll eat this one. I did a bungee jump and I thought I was going to die. <laughs> this is, die. This is even more scary. <laughs> there we go. It's up there, too. Oh, God, that is disgusting. There's a mini gag there. You, you saw me gagging, like, like that has got me pretending I don't like this shit. Come on, James. 20 American dollars. Okay, have some water, have some water. No, 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 no. He's got it. <laughs> oh, God. I've taken... This is you. not an advert for Bubba Grum Shim, don't worry, don't worry. Disgusted. Oh my god. <laughs> Can I say on behalf of Bubba Gum Shrimp that I, I thought it was delicious. I thought it was delicious, so well done. Well Thank done. Thank you. Thank James, you. however. Yeah, I love it. You had the best part of it. I love it. James on behalf of Lauren. That's me. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Alright, you all done with yeah. Let me take it out of your yes. way. Awesome. <laughs> Well, that's probably going to happen, and it did. <laughs> James got the short straw. We got pulled over by the police for speeding. So I was apparently doing 86. <laughs> in the 70s, though. I thought I was doing 70, so... Yeah. Then the agreement said we got into America on the 19th of September. Yeah. He's like, what? You've been here then, now? He's like, yeah, I'm going to be here till 4th of November. He's like, damn! He's <laughs> like... Well, you should see the rest of the passport. It's like, what do you mean? It's like, well, we haven't been in England since, what was it? Second, Second of February. February. It's like, where have you all been? So we started looking for all the passports. It's like, damn, don't you guys work? <laughs> we were like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, so make sure you just uh, keep the speed of 70. And remember, this is miles per hour, not kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> With these kilometers, I'll be doing like 100 boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, got away with it. Just a bit of charm, a quick blowjob, and you got away with it. <laughs> New Orleans, home to so much history, so much culture, so much music, and so we're going to play some crazy golf. Hey, we got the jazz music. Yeah, that's all you need. We went out last night and we couldn't find any jazz music. We come to crazy golf. All and women. Jazz music. <laughs> so it's cultural, educational. We can learn stuff about New Orleans and Louisiana as we go around. Did you know the French pirate Jean Lafitte and his brother based smuggling operations on this waterway in the early 1800s? I didn't know that car. Oh, now you do. Now I do. New Orleans is another town we really didn't make the most of or do justice at all. We were frankly burnt out from all the driving, which of course is on top of the eight months of traveling before that. And it was nice just to enjoy the backpacking scene at the hostel here, which was something of a rare treat to find on this US leg of our trip. Plus, I generally have a rule of not filming stuff on a night out when we're drunk, because whatever we think is funny and interesting at the time ends up being complete rubbish. Hi, Florence! Thank you! 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 Back on the road again, and we now began heading north towards Nashville. Got pulled over speeding for the second time round. What happened this time? <laughs> this time we didn't get so lucky. <laughs> now I have to go to court on the 26th of November in Mississippi. And um, what date did we leave America? Uh, 5th? 3rd of November. Oh, that's too bad. Now 
down south to the land of the pines. Well, we've been in Nashville for a few days, which was fucking awesome. Uh, but we spent the entire time in bars so we haven't filmed anything because that's boring as shit to watch. But we're now going to the Jack Daniels distillery. And um, James has been looking forward to this for a long time. Very, like, months. I don't know, have I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were just drunk at the time, but yeah. <laughs> I talk about it a lot when I'm drinking Jack Daniels. <laughs> Which you do a lot. <laughs> I just want to see whether it actually matches all the adverts because the advert seller has been in like the middle of cousin fucking nowhere. Kind of is like that so far. But it does look like that so far on the way, I'm not going to lie. But um, we'll see if it lives up to the myth and uh, we get free samples in the tour, which would be fun. Which is why I'm driving. Which is why James is driving because I don't even like whiskey. <laughs> Excitement continues on an American trip. <laughs> <laughs> we get here and the sampler tour is sold out. So we're gonna do our own tour. We're gonna do our own tour of the town. This is the barrel house. Right here. It's where they keep the barrels of whiskey. In a house. Fortunately, we're trying to figure out if we can get in just by ourselves, but it's a, protected by a moat. So. But interesting fact about where Jack Daniels is made is it's a dry county, so you can't actually even drink here. <laughs> <laughs> So there's nowhere we can't even go for beer. Nope. <laughs> One thing is true though, it is in the middle of nowhere, so that bit is true. And it looks like it's the same factory that they use in the adverts. This is where old Jack used to work and make his whiskey the slow long way. Nobody knows why Jack called his number seven, but many stories have come about. Each one more ridiculous than the last. <laughs> Some say it's to do with the length of his penis <laughs> that he used to stir to make the whiskey. We were pretty disappointed not to be able to do the tour, so we returned to Nashville and did our default activity of a round of mini golf. I think mean, you're gonna lose. I know I'm gonna win. <laughs> we had a fantastic time in Nashville, New Orleans and Austin, but we didn't really have much to show for it because all we were doing was just hanging out in bars and you know we had a great time but it's not exactly a fulfilling experience because like you compare it to other places we went in the world where we do something amazing during the day and then we go and hang out in the bars and that was the thing I mean it obviously goes without saying that there's like so much to do in America but then half of that and certainly where I'd say the best of that was shut because of the government shutdown so we were stuck in the cities and then you know neither of us really like museums and then a lot of the touristy stuff there is very family orientated you know, it's not very really geared towards backpackers. And obviously, by this point in the trip, we were seriously running out of money. So we basically had to sort of find the stuff to do that fit within our small criteria. And I spent like hours every day just Googling stuff on my iPad, trying to find stuff that we could afford to do. But eventually I just got sick of it and we just went, oh fuck it, let's just go and play some more mini golf. It then becomes a vicious cycle because the more lethargic you get, the less you end up doing. And then the less you do, you become even more lethargic. And you know, we were tired as well from all the driving. And it's funny because when we told people about our nine month round of world trip, and we mentioned the last leg was driving from LA to New York, that's the bit everyone like, got us most excited about. Like, wow, I can't believe you're doing that. The last leg of our trip is LA to New York. That's a trip of a lifetime in itself. And that's our last little leg. So, not smug or anything. Oh, very smug. It's a fucking travel video. The whole thing is smug. Uh, you know, the American road trip has been so romanticized by popular culture through like movies and music. But the reality of an American road trip is, you know, you turn right out of your hotel, turn left onto the interstate and drive in a straight line that way for six hours until you get to your next place. But don't get me wrong, we still had a great time. It's just, it paled in comparison to the unbelievable experiences we had on the rest of the trip. And I think if the US leg was in the middle, we might have gone, oh, we're not enjoying this as much as the rest, let's skip on to the next place. But it was the last leg, neither of us wanted to go home, so we just kept going from city to city to city. Alright, let's go see what Chicago has to offer. Where you go in the world, there's always a guy playing pan pipes trying to sell CDs. 
Chicago was another town we had a great time in, but again, that all happened in the bars, so we've got nothing to show for it. Fortunately, we were heading into Canada, the 20th country of our trip, to catch up with some friends from home, as well as the countless Canadians we met on the trip. Well, before we catch up with all our friends tonight, we're gonna to do all the touristy stuff in Toronto, which is basically just the CN Tower. But uh, I have a voucher for this from my colleagues at Bright Talk, so I'm sure we're gonna have a great time. Most spectacular lump of concrete you've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to figure out why the hell it's built. <laughs> they had excess concrete and they needed to get rid of it. Traveling at the elevator's top speed of 22 kilometers an hour or 15 miles an hour, we'll be up in less than a minute. 114 building stories. So we just learned why it was built. Tell us, James. Uh, Telecommunications tower. We're learning so much. It's great. It's pretty scary. <laughs> you can do it, James. Right now. Wow. He's so brave. <laughs> On the edge. I feel like I can do a bungee off this. Yeah, I reckon yeah. if it was outside. Yeah. Well, I had a great time. I know James had a great time, didn't you? Thank you, Bright Talk, for that wonderful gift. <laughs> right, pub? Yeah. I'm going to watch that thing. What an ungrateful bastard. <laughs> Speaking of Bright Talk, my Canadian colleague and good friend Matt Harris was over visiting his family for a week, so I made the 90 minute journey up to his hometown of Barry. He uh, treated us to the CN Tower yesterday, which was fucking awesome. Uh, but now we're in Barry, which is the most exciting town we've been to on the trip. Matt. Now I know you've seen a lot of stuff on this nine month trip around the world, but this will be in the trailer because this will be the highlight <laughs> of the event. And uh, I heard there was a sarcastic video shot and said CN Tower, <laughs> so if I don't like the footage, you can fuck off. <laughs> this is my hometown, don't fucking diss it. This is where I'm from, this is where all the talent comes from, this place here. So, it's Bear, it's a city, it's in Canada. Yeah, Over well, to the right, we have the traffic lights. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> if you end up editing this and making fun of my hometown, I will kill you, Carl, I will kill you. I love it here. <laughs> Back in Toronto, we had a big reunion with Mike and Lindsay, who we met in the Australian Outback, and Evan and Rebecca, who were with us in Peru. And Lindsay and Mike, we met in the Outback, lovely people, one of the best of our trips. Lindsay just begged me to get it out. So, thank you. Ah! I've got it out. I've got it out. I've got it out. <laughs> you know what? She's always begging me to get it out. So, so, so I understand where it's coming from. Yeah. Why don't you ask the girls what happens after 2 a.m.? Yeah. yeah, what happens after 2 a.m.? Number <laughs> It's like you survive till two, you get the pute. <laughs> so all you gotta do is stay up to two, you get the pute. No, we did. It's called you guys wanna get pute, not pute. Yeah. I said it. Who was the best guy you had in your trip? Who was the best in your trip? Scotty. Scotty Australia. There's no better. No better. We saw you, Percy, but. You took a trip that was really not that interesting, you made it fantastic. Never forget it. When you look back on this video, when you're piggybacking me and we're hugging and stroking each other's faces. <laughs> I went to see <laughs> Yes, at least I've changed. Okay, I've got clothes on. James never wanted to change, like, I'm not going to change this. It's always going to remind me. I could never take it off. <laughs> oh, my, my love. It's like, my love. Oh, it's a recreation. I'll get you there, Frodo. <laughs> Frodo and Sam. I haven't been spanked in like, I don't know, six hours. So that was, that was good, that was nice. Glad you liked it. And ladies and gentlemen, that's Toronto. <laughs> We're in Niagara Falls, and I've been saying that all along that James is going to see and go, it's pretty nice, but it's not a Guazu Falls. So let's see what happens. 
culture of Niagara Falls, eh? <laughs> Just think of any word for it, it's classy. <laughs> I'm glad you sold it down to me because I actually don't think it's that bad. <laughs> I know it's not a Guazi Falls, but it's still impressive. <laughs> how high do you think? How high is it? I'm trying to think because Guazi was 82 meters high. which is about 60 metres. That's what I called. James called it. I guess I could tell the scale between the people next to the falls. Yeah, genius. Worked out. We were just going to spend one day in Niagara Falls, but Patrick, the owner of our hostel, advised us to, and I quote, slow the fuck down. 99% of tourists just come for the falls, when in fact there's more to see here. So we ended up staying two days. Next stop on the tour, Niagara Dam. What was the good pun you just had? Damn, that's big. Oh, <laughs> oh we're having fun. <laughs> Can you see Toronto? Yeah. It's a big lake. We went for a short walk through the forest by the river, and it was so nice being in the countryside again instead of being stuck in a city. Patrick said this is the narrowest bit of the river, so you can actually throw a stone at America, but you should never do that because you're officially attacking America, which is never a good idea. James is gonna fucking stick it to America. I don't think I can make it. Come on. <laughs> I think America's safe for now. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> then we got him. Got himself a fish. Do you like it? No. <laughs> <laughs> After such a relaxing time in Niagara, we had one last journey to make. Because after nine months traveling through 20 countries in four continents, covering a distance of over 42,000 miles, we were finally arriving in New York. Say goodbye to Dodge Avenger. Took us, took us over, well. took us over 5,000 miles, quite slowly. Yeah. to us by Mike and Matt that actually has some history and some character. It's called McSorley's Old Ale House. Only choices of drink are either light or dark ale. Cheers. McSorley's is the oldest Irish tavern in New York City, opening in 1854, and is full of memorabilia dating back over a hundred years. It's the only bar that didn't change even for the permission. Only legal bar in the whole of America because it only had a beer license, not a full liquor license. So clientele has changed. It used to be only men until 1970. The law changed saying they had to accept women. I'll get your bill if you want. <laughs> now you get a mixture of fat boys who enjoy the 150 ale, or guy booked out in out of towners, desperate to crab on something real in today's plastic coated but culture. That's pretty much us. <laughs> The uh, wishbones up there, um, they were from soldiers about to go out and fight in the First World War, and the idea was that they'd break them when they come back. So the ones that are still left there are from the soldiers that never made it back, and they've just kept it up there ever since you know, 1914, 1919. I can't imagine that exit sign was here in 1854. <laughs> 
It's one of the few new additions. Like electricity. Yeah, 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 yeah. We decided we were only going to stay for one. What's this name? Six. Six. Yeah, 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 yeah. We saw the Statue of Liberty from afar, but it was twenty-eight dollars to go see it. So, I'd rather do twenty-eight dollars in the bar. Pretty much. Like, like two, four, six, seven, seven pints. Seven pints. Yeah. Or seven glasses. I said twenty-eight dollars for a photo. It's got more history. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was kind of a lingering sadness over our time in New York because we knew that in a couple of days the whole thing will be over. And you know for like the last nine months we've literally been living the dream and then just like that we got on the plane, we flew home, said goodbye to each other and that was it. It was over. And I remember when we landed on the tarmac at Heathrow we both kind of just looked at each other going there's no fucking way we could be home. There's no way we could be here. Surely we've got to just be at our next exotic location, going off on our next adventure. There's no way we can be back. And then you get off the plane, you look around, and it's like, bollocks. But you know, we can't complain because we've just had like the best nine months of our lives. And then, you know, four months later, we were back on the tarmac at Heathrow. Me and James flying off to Switzerland to go snowboarding with Sarah and Lala, who we met in Panama. So the adventures just keep going. Nothing can stop us there. No, <laughs> I mean, for James, at the start of the trip, he was like, well, I want to come for the whole nine months, but maybe I'll just do three, I'll see how much I enjoy it. But by the end of it, he didn't even want to go home. And anytime anyone asks him about the trip now, he's like, well, it's just the best nine months of my life. And in fact, the only reason he's not here to speak for himself now is he's off on a month-long European road trip. We're in Paris. It's the Eiffel Tower. What, this? No. <laughs> That's called the lamppost. <laughs> and for me, next month, I'm off to Tibet and Nepal. Whenever I think of Tibet, I think of this palace, plus Brad Pitt. Um... That's the thing, the more you travel, the more you want to see, so you just keep going and going and going. Everyone's having a good time, Steve and his crew. Yeah! You know, and there's two things people often say to me. And the first is, wow, you're so lucky to go on this trip. You're so lucky to be able to travel like that. And obviously within the grand perspective of things, we're incredibly lucky to be able to travel around the world for nine months. But when you narrow that down to the people in the same generation as us with the same opportunities, you know, luck's got nothing to do with it. You know, we didn't win a competition, we just worked hard, did a shitload of saving, booked a ticket and went. And I'm not saying this to be like self-congratulating or anything like that, it's just that if you've watched this video and thought, oh, I'd love to do something like that, well, Ultimately, the only person stopping you from doing it is yourself. So if you want to do it, just save up, book a ticket, and go. Boys and girls, okay. welcome to Castaway Island! Yeah. And the second thing people always ask me was, what was your favorite place you went to? And it's a really hard question to answer because you enjoy different places for different reasons. But ultimately, it was the people that made the places. And everywhere we went, we met some incredible people, made some amazing friends. A lot of them were featured in this video, and then there's some that didn't, it all just depends on when I had the camera out. But that's one of the best things about traveling, is constantly meeting new people, sharing these fantastic experiences together. And it's those people that made this, you know, the best nine months of our lives. Oh, there he is! <laughs> is not indicated. Wee wee. Is that enough? Ladies, we need some tips. Winning everything today. I win. There you go. Free Willy wants to get his flippers on the clippers. <laughs> It's 
man. Made our day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ubi. So much fun. So much fun. We're having a good time. That's the gist of it. We're having a very, very good time. <laughs>